Good morning, folks, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to the Vicarage for another light bite. Quite a long talk today, I think. I hope you'll forgive me for that. On Tuesday, the 31st of October, it will be Halloween. Halloween is big business in this country. Um, second in importance economically only to Christmas, I think, of all the festivals. And it's forecast that in the UK we'll spend over a billion pounds on it. With Generation Z, those currently between the ages of 12 and 26, spending most. A billion pounds. What could you do with that? Mind you, it's not quite as bad as the United States, where they're likely to spend um, a billion dollars on Halloween costumes for pets. And about seven billion dollars on Halloween altogether. I make no apology for saying that I don't like Halloween. And my suggestion is that we as Christians shouldn't be enthusiastic about keeping it either. Here's our reading. I should say two readings. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 14. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations, which you are about to dispossess, listen to fortune tellers and to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. And then from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 10 from verses 19 to 24. What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything? No. I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbour. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So on Tuesday evening, my front gate will be closed. The front of my house will be in darkness, and I won't be answering the door. I hate being a killjoy. Love to think that children are enjoying life and having fun. Love to think that people are being positive and generous. But despite the fact that it's fun, I don't think that Halloween is healthy. And I certainly don't think that it's healthy for those who claim Christian faith. And I'm not going to encourage it. Let's remind ourselves of what goes on. The main thing, of course, these days is trick or treat. Children dress up in scary outfits as ghosts or skeletons or vampires or zombies or stuff like that. Or sometimes in nicer outfits. They often carry a lantern called the jack-o'-lantern, which is a hollowed out pumpkin with a scary face cut into it and a candle inside. They knock on people's doors and when the door is open, they say trick or treat, meaning if you don't treat us, in other words, don't give us some sweets or a cake, we'll play a trick on you. Good, innocent fun. 
Although in these days of political correctness, a child can get into serious trouble at school for threatening another child and certainly for damaging property or playing unkind tricks. So you might want to ask yourself whether it's right to allow children to threaten householders, even in fun. Surely it conveys the wrong message. But let's have a think about it. Where does it come from? Britain has been Christian for the last 1500 years. Before that, here in Ireland and in France, the dominant customs were Celtic. Their priests were Druids. The Celts were farmers. And uh, their seasons and their worship were to do with nature and growth and fertility. One part of that was the festival of Samhain which happened on the 31st of October. And then it ran into their new year, which came on the 1st of November. The Celts believed that on the 31st of October, when the harvest was over and nature was basically dying into the darkness of the winter season, the space between the world of humans and the world of the dead was especially thin. <clears throat> They believed that the spirits of the dead could cross into this world and harass or attack people. The Druids used to light big bonfires to bring light to communities. And then they would take the light from the bonfires into people's homes and light the fires in people's hearths. Ordinary folk used to disguise themselves with scary costumes so that if spirits were around, the spirits would be deceived into thinking the humans were them themselves spirits and not attack them. Some people used to put gifts of food outside their houses to bribe or distract the spirits. And still others um, used food to um, bribe the druid priests. What about the pumpkins with scary faces, the jack-o'-lanterns? Well, this is said to go back to an Irishman called Stingy Jack, who tricked the devil twice. First, it was said that he and the devil were having a drink together. Not a good idea. And he tricked the devil into turning himself into a coin to pay for the drinks. But then Jack didn't pay. And he put the coin next to uh, a cross, which prevented the devil from changing back. And Jack wouldn't take the cross away until the devil promised that he wouldn't bother Jack for a year. The second trick was that when he tricked the devil into climbing a tree to pick a piece of fruit, but then drew a cross on the trunk so the devil come, couldn't come down. And the devil had to promised that he wouldn't bother to claim Jack's soul for 10 years or more. Not sure how uh, Jack then undrew the cross on the trunk, but that's another mystery, isn't it? But soon after that, Jack died. And because the devil had promised not to claim Jack's soul, he wouldn't let him into hell. And God wouldn't allow such a dreadful character into heaven. The devil sent him off into the dark night in this world with only a burning coal to light the way. Jack put the coal into a carved out turnip and he's been wandering the earth with it ever since, goes the story. The Irish began to refer to him as Jack-o'-lantern. The story found its way to the United States and in the United States they began to use pumpkins rather than turnips. Now that's a story, of course, but it could be just to do with people being people seeing unfamiliar lights out on the marsh at night, or making up stories or children playing tricks. But there's what we have. So far, what we have is basically a pagan festival celebrating the end of the harvest season and the coming of the season of darkness. And we have a festival which is all about the spirits of the dead, a scary festival. 
But there's another part of this, Satanism, the worship of Satan, which has October 31st as one of the two main festivals of the year. But depending on where you look, you get different information. The Church of Satan says that Satanism is actually about the self and not any kind of gods. But other people, of course, there will always be some people who think they know best. Other people think it's somehow clever to worship Satan. The word Satan is a biblical word, and it means an accuser or an adversary. In the Bible, Satan is a created being, a fallen angel, who tempted Eve and caused the fall of Adam and Eve, attacked Job, tried to tempt Jesus, and still attempts to accuse Christians and divide them, and so evil. So, not to be trusted. Would you trust somebody who could never be relied on to tell the truth? He's also the father of lies, I've not mentioned that. And then in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, it tells us that Satan is doomed. But some of those children's costumes might be about dressing up as Satan. Now, my wife, uh, and you'll have to forgive me for this one. My wife worked in China and she told of a young Chinese girl. I think she was about 11 who didn't speak any English. And neither did her parents. And this young lass was wearing a T-shirt with emblazoned across the front, rape me. Now, it might not have been unsafe to wear it in China. But we would not claim that it was a good or healthy or desirable thing to wear. Thankfully, Somebody pointed out to the girl's parents what that was about. And that was the end of the T-shirt, thankfully. But here's the point. Ignorance can lead us into all kinds of error. What about paganism or occult or darkness or fear or spirits as they appear as part of the Halloween celebrations? It may or may not be safe. But if the only thing we use to judge it is that it's fun, we are definitely not thinking hard enough. One thing we do know is that Pope Gregory IV plonked All Saints' Time, the celebration um, of Christian lives on 1st of November, and All Souls, which celebrates those faithful Christians who have died in the faith of Christ. Pope Gregory put those two Christian festivals on top of Samhain, almost certainly tried to try to squash the life out of it. He evidently felt that this pagan concentration on darkness and evil was not helpful. And I think that at Halloween we should turn to our Bibles. In our Old Testament passage from Deuteronomy, there are some of the rules for God's people in their new land there shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or is a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or who, one who inquires after the dead actually there's a number of words there that are about contacting the dead and it goes on for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these ab abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. Whatever things that, like that that your neighboring nations do, you don't. And there's the clear instructions. In other words, stay away from the occult, the spooky, the supernatural. Leave it alone, for goodness sake. Not because it's dangerous, but because it's ungodly it's unholy it sidelines god it's a temptation remember in the scriptures god brooks no rivals rivals in the second of our readings 1 corinthians 10 it's about food which had been offered to idols it's not banned said paul but it's not helpful if you're going to lead yourself or someone else astray don't 
imitate pagan practices. And then, of course, Satan, we must remember, um, he is the adversary who, as a roaring lion, prowls around seeking someone to devour. That's in 1 Peter 5. Um, we're also told in 2 Corinthians 11 how he disguises himself as an angel of light. We're told in 1 Peter 5 again that we're able to resist him steadfast in the faith. We're told in James 4, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. We're not to get up close and personal with Satan or indeed with any of the powers of darkness. According to Revelation 20, Satan will ultimately be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. So I do hope you'll see where I'm coming from here. Halloween is not something I will keep. But you know, I might actually be persuaded to keep all souls, the commemoration of the faithful departed, or all saints, the celebration of those who are in Christ. Might be persuaded to keep those. Those are good. I'll leave the last word to St. Paul. This is from Ephesians chapter 6. Final, he says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be, may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, we're going to have a fantastic old hymn written by Martin Luther, actually, about spiritual warfare.
Father God, thank you for all your goodness to us. And especially today, we give thanks for our children and the joy and the challenges that ch the caring for them brings us. Lord God, faced with Halloween and its concentration on the dark and on scary things, we pray that you'll help us to be discerning. Help us more generally to give our children and grandchildren even experiences which will bring them joy and light and not just fun. And help us to introduce them to faith in Christ, which will fulfill them most of all. At this time of year and in the whole of our life, help us to protect our children, not just from physical and emotional harm, but also from spiritual harm too. And help us not to minimise the seriousness of a world in which we don't take proper responsibility. Help us in the name of Christ and in his power to resist the devil and all his works that he flees from us and help us to look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep all our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us and our loved ones today and always. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about evil in the world. Please do continue to pray for Israel and Gaza and for Russia and Ukraine and for all those other trouble spots in the world.